Jane Eyre is among the classic novels written by Charlotte Bronte and it's been termed as a Bildungsroman, okay? And of course, if you're not sure what a Bildungsroman is and if you've come across this word spelt B-I-L-D-U-N-G-S-R-O-M-A-N, this is essentially a certain genre of writing or storytelling which basically follows a protagonist through the formative years. In other words, it follows a protagonist from the young age through the education and as they morally and spiritually and educationally develop into adulthood and later years. And essentially this is a story, it usually tends to be a very long and epic story about the protagonist as they develop through life. And Jane Eyre is really the quintessentially Bill Dung's Roman type of story which follows Jane Eyre herself from her childhood as a young orphan through her schooling years in Lowood and later on when she becomes a governess and ultimately when she does end up marrying Mr Rochester at the end of the story. Now this story is a very detailed and very descriptive story. It runs almost in excess of 500 pages long. So what I thought would be really useful when it comes to revising this story if you're studying it for either your coursework or exams is it would be a really good idea as a starting point especially if you've read the entire novel but you're not entirely sure how to summarize it all in a nutshell. It would be good if we looked at the plot and the key events and that's what I've done. So as you can see here I've essentially mapped out all the key events in a nutshell as to what happens in Jane Eyre. So what I'm going to do is talk you through all the major things that you need to understand when it comes to this plot so that especially when you're kind of writing about it in your exams you can have a general idea of just the different touch points in what can be a fairly long novel okay. So firstly we're going to first start off at the starting point of the story and this is when we learn Jane Eyre as a young child is an orphan. So the story begins with Jane our main protagonist who is an orphan and she lives with the Reed family and we find out that the Reed family is actually particularly cruel to her. We've got Mrs Reed who's a widow, her husband died and it was actually on the wishes of her husband that Jane was allowed to stay with them and to be looked after and her husband had asked Mrs Reed to treat her like a daughter. However she doesn't, she treats her almost like a servant, she treats her very very badly. Also John Reed, her son, is especially cruel to her but of course also the other two daughters, uh, Eliza and Georgiana, are especially cruel to Jane Eyre. So as an orphan she's mistreated by the Reed family and there's one key turning point where she is sent to the Red Room when she does stand up for herself, to, especially to John Reed. And this Red Room is believed to be a haunted room in the house because this is where Mr Reed died. Now she really suffers in that Red Room because she is very terrified, she is very horrified to be left in this room. And this is really a key turning point because at this stage Mrs Reed realises that Jane Eyre can no longer stay with them. Even if she's quite young, she decides that she will have her be sent off to stay in a school for orphans. So then the next major event is Jane ends up going to Lowood School and this is where the headmaster, Mr Brocklehurst, this is a school that he manages for orphans and, uh, and children who don't have any homes. However, we learn that Mr Brocklehurst, in spite of being seemingly very religious, is actually quite cruel in the way he treats the girls in this school. And during her time in this school, she meets a lady a young woman called Helen Burns who is very forgiving she turns the other cheek so once when Jane first joins Lowood school she is very spirited she is very unforgiving of Mrs Reed and how Mrs Reed treats her and she's very angry however she's really taken by how Helen Burns exhibits very Christian values of patience and even when she's hit in school she is she sees uh, the teacher's perspective as to why she, the teacher hit Helen Burns and she has a very important effect on teaching Jane the Christian values of duty, perseverance and being really the quintessential Victorian woman who's very passive, very quiet, submissive and very forgiving. Now in this essentially we learn that uh, the conditions at Lowood School are really really bad and ultimately Helen Byrne dies after having a very powerful impact on Jane Eyre. Now she dies and later on Jane Eyre after finishing school she goes on to become a teacher so she goes on to stay for eight years at Lowood School. Afterwards, after she spent a great amount of time at Lowood, she decides to move on and apply for a role as a governess for a young lady called Adele in Thornfield Hall. Okay, so Jane then becomes a governess at Thornfield Hall because she's offered that position and there she meets and falls in love with the head of this hall and this is Mr Rochester. So she meets him, she falls in love with him and she's very drawn to him. 
Now, whilst at Thornfield Hall on one mysterious night, a fire breaks out and Jane hears very animalistic noises as before the fire breaks out. Fortunately, she's awake and she rushes and finds the major source of the fire is in Mr. Rochester's room. She wakes him up and she actually saves his life. And Mr. Rochester states that it's probably Grace Paul who's been living upstairs. She is a servant and he says that she's probably the person who caused the fire. But Jane is really puzzled because she's wondering why is she still allowed to stay on in Thornfield Hall if she tried to kill her master. So it's something that also intrigues us as readers. We wonder why would Mr. Rochester let Grace Paul stay in the same house as him if she tried to kill him. So there's something that's not quite clear. However, they move on from this and of course Mr. Rochester ultimately confesses his own love for Jane Eyre and he proposes to her. So at first she is really surprised because she thought he was going to marry an upper class woman called Ingram, Blanche Ingram. However, he shows his disdain for these very pretentious upper class women and he really respects Jane for her spirituality but also for her composure and her intellect. And of course they agree to marry and Jane is really, really happy. However, on their wedding day, a man comes in and declares as Mr. that Mr. Rochester is committing a criminal offence of bigamy because he is already married. In fact, he married when he was in the Caribbean to a lady called Bertha and she he brought her back to Thornfield Hall and it's actually a mad woman. His wife is a mad woman. He's living upstairs in Thornfield Hall. And of course, that idea of the fire now starts coming, the, the, the dots start joining up. That's when we start realising that Bertha is the source of a lot of the mischief that's happening in Thornfield Hall. So of course, when Jane realises that to marry Mr. Rochester would be committing a sinful act of bigamy, she rejects the marriage altogether, even if Mr. Rochester insists that they should marry because his wife is mentally unfit to be a wife. However, Jane refuses and then she ends up becoming very very brokenhearted. She cannot live in Thornfield Hall anymore so she decides to run away. Now this is when the story gets very dark for Jane because she runs away and then she then ultimately becomes very destitute. She uses up all her money on her journey away and she only has enough money for even a one-way uh, ticket to leave. She becomes poor, she becomes destitute and ultimately she falls very sick and really she's at death's door when she almost dies but the Rivers, another family she meets, ultimately come uh, rescue her. So she knocks at the door, the servant of the Rivers first rejects her when she tries to open because the servant thinks that maybe she's a beggar in the middle of the night. However, Mr John Rivers, who's the man of the household, he lets them in and of course we learn that Mr Rivers lives with his sisters as well as a servant. They nurse her back to health and she doesn't necessarily reveal all the details that lead her to be destitute and poor. However, she's very, very grateful and she grows very close to the Rivers family after they rescue her. Now, she then later learns once she's living with the Rivers family that her uncle in Madeira left her a hefty inheritance that Mrs. Reed didn't let her know. So her uncle had been looking for her ever since she left for Lowood. However, Mrs. Reed, when she's dying, confesses to Jane that he was looking for her, but she told him that she had died. However, ultimately she is found, but she never meets her uncle. She just realizes that there's been an advert put in her name seeking her. And then she realizes she has this massive inheritance from her uncle who's left all of this money to her. She uses this in order to uh, not only enrich herself, but she also bails out the Rivers family who they have some status, but they've lost all their money. So they don't have that much money. However, she rescues the two River sisters who they themselves were working as governesses and Mr. John Rivers, who also gets part of her inheritance. Now, Mr. John Rivers and the River sisters turn out to be Jane's cousins and the uncle who's left her an inheritance turns out to have stolen and have led the Rivers' dad into a bad business decision. That's one of the reasons why they lost so much money. So actually, Jane is kind of paying them back for what they lost. Now, Mr. John Rivers, who is very, very, very devout, he decides that he wants to go to work as a missionary in India and he proposes to Jane. He tries to get Jane to marry her. However, Jane realizes that she does not really love him and she rejects. So she's very close to marrying him out of duty, but she rejects. And then one night in a dream, she dreams that Mr. Rochester is vividly calling out to her. So she decides to go and seek him and she d rejects Mr. Rivers who then goes off to India and then she goes back to Thornfield Hall to look for Mr. Rochester because that dream is so vivid that she feels like he's calling out to her. Now when she gets back to Thornfield Hall she finds that it has burned down. It's no longer there and then she traces Mr. Rochester who is now disabled 
to a place in Ferndine and this is where he used to sometimes escape for uh, you know rest and respite from Thornfield Hall. She learns that Adele has also been put in a boarding school and she realizes that Bertha in a fit of madness ended up burning Thornfield Hall and Mr Rochester became blind and disabled. Now during this period when she does rediscover him of course she realizes that he still loves her in fact he has been crushed ever since she left him by his unrequited love for Jane. Jane decides to forgive him and of course he's now a widow so, so he, he's now a widower actually and so he's now free to remarry without committing any crime of bigamy so Jane agrees to marry him and he is basically rescued in the eyes of God and he also takes on many of Jane's Christian values. So that's really it when it comes to understanding the key events that happen in Jane Eyre. As I've mentioned, this book is a very detailed book. It's a Bildungsroman, which essentially follows Jane through her childhood as an orphan, her formative years during her educational years in Lowood, and ultimately when she meets Mr. Rochester, falls in love with him, goes through a period of hardship, but then ultimately finds Mr. Rochester again and marries him and falls in love with him and lives happily ever after with him. Okay, so that's really it when it comes to understanding the key events in Jane Eyre.